All right. So on a practical level, and, and you started out, I understand, as a prosecutor. Your, your background. Assistant DA, right. Okay, so, Dallas. so you have a legal background. So you, you would be able to at least have some sense of how to manage this. A, a lot of folks in government don't well, have that background. A lot of people wanted to be able to oppose a listing in advance. I don't see any likelihood of that happening. So I got to thinking, what do you do? When you have the deck seemingly stacked against you, there's always nonetheless a way you can deal with it. And so what uh, we did, uh, and this was related to a sort of a famous lizard, the dune sagebrush lizard, that was proposed for listing in the big oil patch in the state of Texas, and something kind of interesting and unusual happened. This listing was proposed, and this lizard um, becomes very inactive in the summer. Well, four or five guys got together and coughed up a quarter of a million dollars to hire biologists. These guys went out into the five counties where these lizards primarily hang out and went and looked for them. Now, these, these individuals, are they federal government no, individuals? No, these are oil and gas guys oil, who okay. are looking at their entire livelihoods being gone. Right. This, this particular area, the Permian Basin of Texas, uh, produces about 14% of all U.S. crude oil, has 47,000 jobs. It's about 40% of Texas crude oil. It's a huge economic driver. Right. right. And they did not believe the lizard should be threatened, did not believe it should be a lizard, but they needed information. There was virtually no data about where this lizard was, what its habitat issues were, how at risk it was. And so they got super-duper scientists, super-duper biologists, and they discovered instead of the lizards being in three spots, they were in 28 which meant automatically all of the proposed information was wrong from the outset. They put together a plan uh, that they would avoid where the lizards were, which they felt they could do, or they would end up, we, we helped work a plan for them where they could go ahead and even be in habitat. Fish and Wildlife thought it was such an unusual, interesting plan because it had a very significant research component in it. That's, that, that's important. And I say this as a lawyer. Right. If you're going to go to court, better be ready. And what I've seen before is that in a lot of cases, when you have this species coming in at you, you don't get ahead of it, you don't gather data, you have no way to rebut the information, and you're back on your heels. And there are millions of dollars at risk. Oh, yeah, up, up to hundreds and hundreds of millions. We're dealing here with a specific case. Now, how long ago was this? Uh, a couple of years. Okay, a couple of years ago, because I, I do remember that being in the news. It's a lizard. Yep. And the contention is that if something were happened to this lizard, it would be disastrous. Well, there'll, there'll be penalties. So what's happened is is that under the Endangered Species Act, if you are if you, if it's listed as endangered, if it were listed, and it wasn't, mm-hmm. thank goodness. If it had been listed as endangered, then all of these rules, this pile of bricks, would pile in on these ranchers who have this ranch land, um, these oil companies, on anybody that's trying to cut a road. Anytime you move dirt. Right. You are affecting habitat. Right. And it's this constant hmm. sort of piling on of bad things. And I looked at that. I thought, well, there's a very interesting lesson here. We came late to the information data science table, but we were successful. So in that, in the next session, we, our legislature meets only every two years. So in 2013, I asked the legislature for a $5 million science fund to engage every single public university in the state. I would administer it. And we would then go after data and science to get ahead of these species. So back to my point of what species is next? Well, that's a problem. So how do you know which one to go look for? So we set up a three tiered system of analytics. First, we have a science working group, which every single state university system is at the table. First question was, do we know anything about this species? There are about 120 sitting in our Texas inbox from these people. Unbelievable. 120. So do we know about them? We decided that if you knew nothing, that would get a five. By golly, we better find out something. If we already know a lot, we're not in trouble. The second 
lens or analytics was what my office did was, gee, what would happen if it was listed? What's the economic impact if something? Well, if it only occurs in half of one county, there's basically no economic impact, so it gets a one on a score of one to five. Right. If it's in the middle of the oil patch or it's in the middle of some extraordinary economic activity, it gets a five. Mm -hmm. The third analytic, and this is the one that is the trickiest, how fast do you have to know? Right. When is the federal hammer going to hit you in the forehead? Well, the federal hammer, you may not see it coming. Because what happens is somebody may come in all of a sudden as these petitions come in and they move the clock up. The skunk, nobody knows anything about the skunk. It's all over the state and it's on a clock. So we had a score of up to 15. Five, five, and five would be the maximum. Well, we've now, it's on the web at Keeping Texas First. We've now done three rounds of RFPs, requests for proposals. So how many dollars are we talking about right now? Just, just well, I've at got this a, point I've got on my this specific I've, situation. Uh, well, my $5 million fund is right. over two years. We have, we're, we're getting ready to sort of obligate for a multi-year research about $3.5 million. And, and, and the reason that's important, the reason that's important when I left some out is that I don't know when there'll be some other monstrosity coming in through an open window for us to deal with. It's an attack by the folks who the petitioners I will tell you there are plenty of federal agencies who believe that these folks are aiming at the oil patch. Right. And I'm going to show you a picture, which is the darker the county here, the more species there are. But what is all this? Along the Gulf Coast of Texas is all the refineries, right. all, of the, uh, all of the pipelines going to the coast. Mm -hmm. uh, this area, this whole area in the bottom is what's called the Eagle Ford Shale. The Eagle Ford Shale is a giant fracking play, and it is no surprise to me that many, many, many of these species are in the hottest hotbed of economic activity. Where do they pick these species? Well, this is a watershed picture for the state of Texas, and we're getting data, which we'll put up on the web, which we hope will show national watersheds. Okay. You're going to see a confluence of aquatic species in watersheds in order to cover the biggest turf. The, the folks, the Center for Biological Diversity, etc., have are looking at petition. They have petitioned for 12 separate mussels. That's an aquatic little mussel. It's like a clam. They are covering, these 12 cover 14 of our 16 river basins. That's the whole state. And it is deliberate, and it's, it's smart, amazing. and it's strategic. And what I'm saying is we have to be much smarter, much more thoughtful, and you've got to get your research material revved up. It's got to be very, very objective, very good, so that when they come in with what I would call basically junk science, right. you're ready with good science. Because if it gets listed, you have to be ready. So this is almost sounds to, to, uh, to me like a template. I hope it is. Perhaps North Dakota. Absolutely. And is, so is I, that next in line? Uh, no, no, I mean North, North Dakota. I don't want to get, go no, no, far no, off. But I'd say Florida is the worst. Is that right? Well, let me show you why Florida is the worst. So here's our national map. Florida is very dark color. Dark color means they have the most species. The lighter your color of your state, the fewer species. Right. And so look at the eastern seaboard. Look down here. So I, the Florida, I talked to, I went to Las Vegas and talked to the National Association of Home Builders. And I said, guys, you scrape the dirt. Anybody that scrapes the dirt runs the risk of being afoul of the Endangered Species Act. And these guys from Florida called back up and said, tell me what you did. We need to get a research fund. We need to get ahead of this. And they're going to try this legislative session. I don't know where they got, but they called us. We emailed them everything we did, how we did our conflict of interest, how we judged the material, everything, because... Every single state, every chief executive officer of every state has to look out for the economy of your state. You've got to be very, very smart. So it kind of is a uh, template. So this Keeping Texas First website is a template. It's a resource for everybody.